Oh, hello everyone. I'm Chloe and he's Reg. Today we are going to, de- to explore the globalization of English in Hong Kong. So, what is globalization? Globalization is the combination of the words lo- globalization and localization. And it takes place when a global concept is being absorbed into a local environment. So maybe we take Shakespearean place as a typical example. On your left hand side, it is an adaptation of the famous Shakespearean place King Lear into Sham Shui Po. And on your right hand side, you can see Shakespearean plays we perform in Asia every year, which is um, there is a global concept being adopted into a local environment. And we can also see globalization in business, literature, food, and lastly, is languages, and this will be our main focus today. So now we're going to talk about why are we interested in languages. Um, why are we interested in languages? Um, as students of language, we are very aware of uh, the evolution of languages is actually speeding up. Um, actually, for evolution to, uh, for, to take place, it uh, usually takes like thousands of years. Not only a language, but uh, any kind of evolution, like from apes to humans. But um, it doesn't take a language expert for us to see the language used has been changing exponentially for the past few decades because of uh, technological advancement, either in the Cantonese, English, and other kinds of languages. Take, for example, uh, on the left-hand side, these are some something we call uh, old version of Hong Kong English, Nula, Go Down, and Amang. Actually, I believe a large uh, a majority of the audience here doesn't know what this means. Uh, actually, Nuna means a uh, drainage system like that photo over there. And go down is a kind of um, warehouse in Hong Kong when, uh, in the 70s when there are a lot of warehouses in the trading uh, uh, port. Uh, on the right side is what we call uh, the modern kind of Hong Kong English. You can see, you can hear it all the time from teenagers. Chow, hair. Yes, and so, so we can see that increasing in, um, intelligibility actually exists not only among different languages like English uh, or Korean. I don't understand the word of Korean, and so uh, led to the French. I think that's the most unintelligible. Oh, this is uh, just many uh, uh, stories. And on the end, uh, I think time is also a very important determinant factor for us to think that, oh, it's uh, getting more unintelligible. Uh, a very uh, clear example would be, uh, it's starting to get hard to understand what my grandmother is talking about. Yes. So let's go to our focus today, what the, which is uh, globalization of English in Hong Kong. We'll talk about where can we find these kind of what, uh, Hong Kong English, and how has Hong Kong globalized uh, the English language, uh, 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 common language in the world, and we see some examples from texting. Uh, this special kind of conversation take place in Hong Kong, and then finally we finally we will investigate the reasons behind uh, the existence of localization of English. So where can we find Hong Kong English? Actually, English serves a very specific uh, function in Hong Kong. On the one hand. In formal context, for example, in business meetings or education domains, uh, pure English or what we call standard English, for example, American English and British English, uh, is the accepted norm. So um, students and people using this kind of English revere uh, uh, this kind of standard uh, English. Uh, in this case, a Hong Kong variety is very hard to develop because of its limit, uh, because of this uh, functional uh, usage that we tend to use more formal words and grammar. On the other hand, in a casual context, people use indigenous language. In a Hong Kong example, that is Cantonese. We speak to families and we speak to friends in Cantonese. We don't bother using any English because we don't actually know the language very well. In this sense, a Hong Kong variety cannot be developed because of its limited usage. That's clear. And this uh, kind, of, kind of explain what I uh, just talked about. Hong Kong English can exist only somewhere in between. And, 
And this is, uh, like for example, colloquial English. And today we have taken up the example of texting. Uh, very, uh, we don't, because we find texting to be more convenient to be in, in English, so we text in English, but at the same time, we don't care a, a lot about the grammar when we text it. And Chloe will now talk about how this did happen. So, how has Hong Kong globalized the English language? So, in this era, because of the technological advancement, testing seems to become the major source of English used among Hong Kong people. And sometimes people may find even typing English is more convenient than Cantonese. And also, people may test in a mutually intelligible way, which means they will find a common language that is easily understandable by each other in testing. And in such a relaxed situation like testing, People may find less. People may find less pressure to be aware of the grammar they are using, and so because of testing, these examples exist. Firstly, is code mixing, that is using two or more languages in speech, like "Negama sejak lunch maya," which can be translated into "Have you had your lunch?" in English. And secondly, is loan words from English, and that is borrowing words from the English to represent Cantonese expressions. And lastly is the mixture of Cantonese vocabulary and grammar. For vocabulary, we mean we means, uh, giving new meanings to existing words. And I'll talk more about grammar later. So now, let me let's take a look at some examples of Hong Kong English. We have divided it into two categories, which are vocabulary and grammar. In terms of the grammar perspective, it is divided into three aspects according to the most obvious phenomenon we observed in testing. Firstly is the absence of object like I want and he needs. So when we now let's imagine that you are in a classroom, if a teacher asks you oh, who wants an ice cream, would you say I want or I want an ice cream? Probably for Hong Kong people we will say I want because um, we allow these grammatical rules in Cantonese. And this is also kind of a direct translation. And another aspect is tenses, and it can work in both ways. Uh, on the one hand, we can use, um, we will use the English tense systems to substitute some kind of uh, time meaning in Cantonese. And on the other hand, we will use uh, the Cantonese words to replace the function of tenses. So when we now let's take a look at uh, how English will in, how English intrudes into the Cantonese language. So on the top you can see laughed and ed in laughed here actually means already and laughed it is something like laugh out loud in English, um, which is a response when you find something is very funny. And at the bottom laughed at my seat for. The English-speaking people, like maybe some of our judges here, you may you may find this sentence confusing because uh, nothing is funny about a seat, right? But um, as for Hong Kong people, we can we will dissect the sentence into laughed and at my seat. Um, the location is at my seat, and the the action is laughed. And now you may um, get. Make more, you will find the sentence make more sense to you. And now let's look at how Cantonese uh, intrudes into the English language. Um, on top, we can see date job, which actually means dated. And the sentence is uh, means uh, what time did you date? Did you, you guys say? And on at the bottom left corner, a rest jaw jaw here represent the past tense. And, but interestingly, you can see a rest jaw, there is a mixture of Cantonese and English grammar here. Um, yes, now let's go to the third aspect, which is direct translation. No will have time means will not have time, and before not free means wasn't free, and go toilet means go to the toilet, do dreams means hit the gym. And take a look at the conversation. No will have good idea in a short time, um, which means we will not have good idea in a short time. And my friend Ethan 
even make fun of me of why I'm using so much Hong Kong English recently. So uh, on the other side, you can see do gym, which means hit the gym. And in Cantonese, we use do gym because because uh, we 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 treat gym as an activity. But for English people, we treat gym as a place, a location. Yeah. So we we'll use go to the gym. Then now Reg will talk about the the vocabulary perspective. Yes, now on the vocabulary uh, perspective, uh, we have observed like uh, generally four categories of vocabulary usage that has a mixture of Hong Kong and uh, of Cantonese and English uh, vocabularies and grammar. First is invented words. By invented words here, I mean that uh, these words actually doesn't exist in the original or, or British or American English uh, in, in, in days of future past. And uh, these are coinage that we Cantonese uh, people made up. And the first example we can see is chö. Actually, chö, uh, is, uh, meaning here is busy. So this semester is very busy. Yeah, it's very busy. And the uh, second example we're going to look at is hey. Hey, here actually means I want to hear. This means uh, uh, I want to kill time or just want to spend my time with uh, doing nothing at all. Yeah, it's kind of complex meaning here. And the second new new usage here, uh, here is we're taking English vocabularies and uh, making a new usage. Either we turn it down into a verb or, or the other way around. So they here. I'm sure you guys can remember this word from what Chloe just said. There are a lot of dates uh, in the conversation. And actually, they, we use it as a, as a verb. Uh, at, uh, at the top, we say, she dated us first, meaning she has made an appointment with us first. So it's, uh, it's the action of making a, an appointment. And on the left-hand side, you can see, I dated her next Tuesday, meaning I am having a meeting with her next Tuesday. So uh, you have to be like a local Cantonese people to understand this kind of grammar. So, uh, and the third one is shortening. And by shortening here, we included um, acronyms such as ABC and BBC, which we take the initials of each of the words to make up uh, like a, a new word. And, and like Lang sang here, it's a kind of clipping. So we sh shorten the word by uh, cutting it in half. Uh, Lang sang here actually means language center. Uh, in HSMC, we have a language center on the second floor, and, but we, all, we, we just say Lang Sen because it's, uh, it's kind of easy to say, because it's monosyllabic. Uh, it's one syllable, and, and it conforms to uh, Cantonese uh, phonological rule. And you can see in the conversation, it is used quite frequently among our friends. And the second one is Tran Yu, is uh, also a very frequently heard term in HSMC. And this, this guy said, I just want Tran Yu, mean, meaning I want to transfer to you. I want to go to another school. Yeah. And the final one is direct translation. Here we means the word by word translation from Cantonese to English words. And add oil, maybe some of the foreigners uh, in our audience here also know what this means. It's like a, it's the English equivalent of like break a leg or good luck in your exams or something. And you can also see it's used quite frequently among peers. And now we we talk about uh, why this vocalization of English take place? So there are actually two major reasons for the vocalization of English take place in Hong Kong. So the first reason is because Hong Kong is a city with bilingual education. Um, well, not many countries have bilingualism, so Hong Kong provides a very good environment for vocalization of English to take place. And as a result, language creativity exists. Uh, creativity here actually means um, how people mix the usage of Cantonese and English. And another contributing factor to the globalization of English in Hong Kong is the first language influence. Um, well, you may know that Cantonese and English grammar are quite different. So um, well, the function of language is to communicate and to get meaning across. So the mixture of Cantonese and English um, in our usage may might work better. So, and finally, we will have a new brand of language. So then, now Red will talk about the criteria of language. The reason I want to include this criteria of language is not to be pedantic, but 
because we have to figure out if we can call Hong Kong English an actual language, uh, distinctive, uh, standalone form of uh, English in the world. So I have taken uh, the liberty of uh, taking the brains of this social linguist, of Roger Bell, who proposed the criteria of language. And I've summarized that into four, uh, four main criteria. The first of which is standardization, meaning to have a standardized system of rules and list of words. This can uh, usually be seen of codification or compilation of dictionaries, where we can have the list of uh, words, of vocabulary items, and grammar rules. And in Hong Kong English, I think we do achieve this to a certain extent because we do have a dictionary, believe it or not. But we don't have a very systematic uh, rules uh, of grammar to apply when we're speaking. And the second one is vitality, the existence of living community of speakers. Uh, in, in terms of Hong Kong, I don't think a lot of people actually speak Hong Kong English, but rather consider it as errors of her when we're pronouncing English or using English. So I would say that we actually speak Cantonese more than we speak Hong Kong English. And the third one is sense of belonging. Am I proud of my language? Um, uh, I have to say, I hate to say this, but Hong Kong English actually uh, uh, is a very inferior role here in Hong Kong in terms of language. Because when we speak in Hong Kong accent, people just uh, uh, treat us with pejorative pre uh, undertone. And the last one is independence. Can I distinguish myself of speaking Hong Kong English and to establish my identity by the language I speak? And uh, in Hong Kong English, I think we can distinguish that because of the accent. Uh, I can speak very good Hong Kong English. Eh? Yeah, I can, I can speak this, and people can recognize me as Hong Kong English when I'm in Chinatown. And to conclude this uh, presentation, we could say that globalization of English in Hong Kong definitely exists because of the change in vocabularies and grammar rules. So this is all basically very linguistics. But if we have to say that Hong Kong English exists, we have some res reservation. Because it has to depend on two major factors, uh, linguistic richness and social acceptance. It's very important for a language to be accepted by the speakers uh, or identity, or identify themselves with uh, the speaking community. And we, I think it's safe to say that Hong Kong English is an emergent variety. Then maybe after years of revolution or, or, or evolution, then we can come to a place where we can finally have Hong Kong English.